to continue with our evening, we will have uh, Harm van der Brick. I hope I pronounce it well. Uh, who will introduce us to MEM, MEM. and Data Marketplace? If Thank you, you, everybody. Well, I leave you the stage then. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, one question first to start with: Who is actually uh, present in the Slack of IOTA, and who is present in the Speculation Channel? <laughs> cool, cool. Another question: Raise your hand. Carrots or potatoes? Carrots. Carrots. Carrots? Okay. Good one. <laughs> Good one. OK, let me start with uh, MEM, Mask Authentication Messaging. Um, I think this enables also cool applications using IOTA. And um, I think this is why IOTA enables this cool these cool applications, because IOTA supports more than just only a cryptocurrency, like, for example, you have with Bitcoin. Um, that's also the reason why how I got interested, and uh, together with JP, um, interested from a Nexus point of view. It's a Dutch grid operator. That's also why we started building uh, a charge station, which we showed uh, the last time. Because IOTA is more than just cryptocurrencies. It's, it's, it's also data transfer, um, secure data transfer. And that's what MEM is about. So it's about data integrity and secure and authenticated um, messaging, even encrypted, if you want to. Um, and it supports forward secrecy, and that's, that's the cool thing. So what I said, because you don't have any fees, you also can send data around without paying any fee. So before you just send a value, and now you can send data. You can send actually as much data as you want to because you're not paying any fee. And because you're not paying any fee, and you add the data to the tangle, and you make a transaction by doing so, you actually help the network. Uh, Andrea showed you this picture too, and I'm showing it again, because if you create a, a data transaction, so storing data into the tangle, you just create a normal transaction, but like I said before, it's a zero value transaction. But it helps the network because it, it, it confirms two previous transactions and you add it just to the tangle just as a, as a normal transaction. So what is, what is MEM about? MEM has three different modes, um, and these modes, uh, can, you, can, you, can, you can use them in different use cases. The first one is the public, um, the public mode. Well, um, you have non-repudiation, onweerlegbaarheid in, in Nederlands. Um, it, which is, you sign a message, and because you sign it, you give others reason to believe that the one who sent it out actually is the one who sent it out, because it's the only one who can sign it. And that's the same thing with MEM. If you send a, uh, a message out, so some data, you actually sign it using your seed. And because you are the only one who knows your seed, somebody can know for sure that it was you who put it on the tangle. And if you open that stream, all the messages in there can only be put in that stream because the guy owns that seed, put it in there. So that's something you think to think about. If you give somebody, and we will uh, discuss it later, and I hope everybody brought a laptop because we're going to do some programming too. Um, because you get a root, which is an address in the public one, um, you can find all the next messages in the same stream. And the only one who can send that message to that stream is the one having the seed. <coughs> then you have the private one. The private one is kind of the same. But it hashes actually um, the route you use to find that address, to find that message, and the hash of the route becomes the address. So you can't revert it back to the route. Um, and you need actually that address to unwrap or to get the data decoded some way to get it back out of the tangle. So this allows to, um, uh, to, to, to make sure that no, nobody can deduct the route out of the, uh, out of the address, and you actually need the address to unwrap the data in it. And the restricted one, which um, is also used in the data marketplace, that's why I'm telling you, it uses also an encryption layer on top of the message. So all of the data gets encrypted symmetrically. And with this uh, symmetric encryption, um, nobody can, can read the data in that message. So even if you can find it, for example, in the Tangle, Tangle Explorer, you can't read the data because you need that key to decrypt it. So this allows for some kind of use case, for example, with chart stations. Because if you can create a stream somebody can, um, uh, can fetch, you can send data, for example, if a chart station is available or not, to that stream. And people can know for sure that it was you who put it, so the owner of the chart station put it on, the, on that stream, because it's the only one who is able to do so using the seed. 
And this allows, for example, for um, navigation software, so they can uh, at, so they can connect, for example, to that stream, get the data out, and use that data in their navigation software to show if a charge station is available or not. Maybe in the coming five years, more people will drive electric, and that becomes a yeah not a problem, but a challenge to find charge stations which are not occupied. This, for example, could help in that. And why I'm telling you this, and why, I'm, why, why did I start with MEM? Because the data marketplace actually uses MEM, mask authentication messaging, for enabling the, uh, the, uh, the use case with the data marketplace. And I really like the ma data marketplace. I also had, uh, made a demo with it, which I'll show you later. And I can also show the temperature in here, and you can look it up yourself. But the data marketplace is about sensors. So you get, we have a lot of sensors in the world. Um, usually, the owner of the sensor gets the data and doesn't use it in any way. And the marketplace allows to sell that data or to make that data available also for free. So you don't have to pay for it. You can also exit it for free. And uh, the way that's done is that you have that sensor, you um, um, put it on the tangle, and the data marketplace shows the, uh, the sensor in this, in this map, for example. But later on, this could be also machine to machine. But now you can actually find this if you go to your, on your laptop to data.iota.org. Um, you, can, you can see the same screen. And for example, the last time we showed the charge station, the charge station is also in here. It's located in Arnhem. And the charge station, uh, if you buy it, so you have to, to fund your wallet on the top right. Um, you can see it there. And you have to fund your wallet, and then you can uh, download that data or get that data if you pay for it. And this is on the testnet, so no worries. You don't have to pay anything. It's just test tokens. And if you paid, you get access to the stream. So you get ac access to the actual data stream. And the actual data stream in here shows if the charge station is available or not. Did somebody already um, see the live demo on the data? Are you talking? You are trying the laptop. If you go to now, if you go to to, um, to Amsterdam, you will find this sensor. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's uh, in here. I'm not sure if the cameras can see it, but it's a Raspberry Pi with a with a sensor, and this sensor is measuring the temperature in here. And I can tell you, I watch the stream. I don't have it available live uh, on my laptop. But if you go there, it's, it's getting quite hot in here. We started at around 90 degrees, and we're already at 23. So I'm, I'm feeling uh, the temperature right now. But it's actually working. So it's pushing the data to the data marketplace every five minutes. Did somebody in here look it up now? Did you see the stream? What's the temperature right now? Oh, OK. Oh, yeah, just before 23 degrees, yeah, yeah. So also the streamers, if you go to, uh, to the Data Marketplace website, you can actually get that data right now, pay with test tokens, and see the data as it is presented by the Raspberry Pi, which is uh, yeah, doing a nice job in here. But uh, yeah, I, hope doesn't, I hope it doesn't fall. So this is the actual sensor measuring the temperature in here and put it on the Data Marketplace. This is the large screen of it, um, so people at the stream can also see it. And it's actually very simple to, to, to build. You need a Raspberry Pi. You need the sensor. Um, I soldered it because I had to, 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 uh, to, to solder some plugs on. Um, you need the software for the data marketplace, which is not public now, but it will be public soon. <laughs> so that will be uh, end of December, beginning of January. So if you're in the Slack, it's uh, soon. Dom soon, whatever you want. Um, but it will be available soon, so the API for putting it on the data marketplace will be available. Um, and the same thing with the charge station. What we did before is with the charge station, we moved the proof of work because you actually make a transaction by putting this information on the tangle. We moved the proof of work from the Raspberry Pi in here to the node. So that allows low CPU power devices to, um, to send data to the tangle. Uh, and they don't have to have a huge CPU power to do so, because we're moving the proof of work to the node. And that also scales, because uh, you can have multiple sensors just connecting to one node, and they probably won't send all the information at the same time to that node. So the proof of work is spread uh, over time. And this, is, uh, wa this was before uh, a, a screenshot I made, but it's already much harder in here. Another cool thing is that the Ruby tag, it uses MEM. Um, it's an actual tag uh, created by Ruby, and it works with MEM. And they are able to 
have different kind of sensors put data onto the uh, to the tangle using these, this MEM. And the coolest thing is that they actually are, and this is an announcement, so you can put this into Slack if you want to. <laughs> this is an announcement. Ruby is now partnering with the IOTA Foundation, so they are partners, and they will work together to, um, to build a dev kit. And it's actually a dev kit for allowing to, uh, to send data uh, from these sensors to the network. So it's, in, uh, so it's now, uh, now a partner. And I think uh, the blog post is released before or just after my talk, or maybe later on. Um, <coughs> but this is an actual announcement, so that's pretty cool. And I think that that's, that's also shows that IOTA is looking for real practical implementations. It's not a, a cryptocurrency loan. It's also real use cases with real sensors, which are developed mainly to do these kind of things and put it, in on, put it in a, on a tangle. And that's what I like most. It's, re it's really cool. This is uh, how uh, one of the sensors looked like from Ruby. Um, so it's pretty small. It, uh, it, it supports Bluetooth, I guess. It, it was in here. So it supports Bluetooth, and you can send it uh, via Bluetooth, for example. Uh, probably maybe uh, uh, the dev kit also uh, Wi-Fi, I'm not sure. Um, but it's pretty small, and it doesn't have to be uh, computational powerful to send data to the Tangle, because again, the proof of work is moved to the node. So now I want you to start experiencing something with MEM. Um, and of course, this, will, this slide will be online, so you can do it at home too. Um, but what I, what I want to do is we want, uh, I want you to create a, uh, an MEM channel or a stream which you can send data to, and then you get the root key, and it's all in the Node.js if you open it, and you can actually fetch that data out of the stream. So if you, for example, send this root key to one of your neighbors, they can read everything you put on the tangle using that key. So if you follow these steps, so there's some free time now to do so. If you follow these steps, um, you can get this working. And you can, you can experience yourself using this code, um, Yeah, how to use MEM on your own laptop using Node.js. And you can see actually how simple it is to do so. So what it does is it publishes uh, this information using your seed. And you, you just come up with an 81-character seed, which you don't use for anything else. It uses that seed to publish. And it gives you a root. And that root key, the first one, can be used to fetch all of these uh, messages in the tangle. But if you, for example, publish already four different messages, and you give away that root, from that on, only the next messages are showing, and not the old ones. So this, somehow, if you have the private one, not with the public one, but with the private one, this gives forward secrecy. So this allows to, um, to give away root keys to somebody else, and they can't see the past, but you can only see the future. So you can do this right now. Um, download the code, fire it up, and if you start with um, uh, the second step, um, if you leave the route as it is right now and just try to fetch the information, just, just run it, so run node fetch async.js, it will actually fetch the information I put on two messages uh, before the meetup, so you can test if it's actually working. Question? This is awesome. I can throw this at you. <laughs> Wrong one. Yeah, yeah, I have one question about MAM. It's just yes. uh, on my mind. Uh, when a snapshot happens within the Tangle, you know, like yes. uh, all the transactions are being pruned to just addresses and balances, mm -hmm. um, does that mean I have to give away another root key? So let's say I give your, you my first root key. And after like a while, snapshot happens, boom. And do I have to give another root key? No, no. Um, I, I, think there are, I think there are two answers. If you have, for example, um, some perma nodes which stores all the information, you can just fetch everything, but you probably need to query another server. Um, and the program, how it works now, if you publish something, it looks up if you published before and starts at that index. So um, it will start at a later index. And depending if you work stateless or stateful, it depends if you uh, do that, uh, if, you, if you start at zero again, or if you, or you, if you just start uh, where, you, where you were before the snapshot. Yeah, I think you have to start where you were, because otherwise exactly. you're reusing. I think so, too. Uh, yeah, OK. I think so, too. But good question. Can Andreas, still in here? Um, do you have any answer to that question? <laughs> Can you put the microphone, uh, the normal microphone, on? 
I think it's on now. So uh, I didn't catch that question, I'm sorry. Uh, the question was if you have a snapshot, all of these messages of the MEM stream will get, yeah, not deleted, but will be cleaned up. So where do you start with the new route? <laughs> um, so pretty much where you were starting at before. Uh, yeah. Like, you, you know, each MAM message will always point to the next route. Um, so you just follow that and you don't stop. Um, at the same time, you know, there's this whole concept of permanodes which are being developed, which uh, will offer you, well, which will provide you with a permanent view of all transactions, even beyond snapshots. So you will always be able to reconstruct the data in an MAM stream. Maybe, maybe take the cube so the live stream viewers can hear Catch you it. as well. <laughs> yeah, good one. Could this be an extension of the Tumblr function? Of the what? Of the Tumblr function. And basically that you did take something where you had a stream and you had data in it that you, and then you go ahead and scramble it and give it a new root key. So that's not really how MAM channels work. No, but I'm saying this is the question. I'm saying if the question is basically how do we, uh, if there's the continuation in a MAM channel of somebody who had the had information based on the prior route, and you want to kill them out of not having that information, mm -hmm. that's what I'm understanding is the question here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so if you just want to. Uh Say, make it so in, I, if, you, if you want to make it impossible for someone to continue reading an MAM channel, yes. then you can just change the side key. And like, there's a side key involved, uh, like, at, I think it's on your first slide, right, right down there. Uh, there's essentially a side key which is also hashed together with the root to determine uh, where things are attached and also how to determine the um, okay, encryption but if, key. If they have an offline copy of the data and they have a decryption key, not if they don't also know the side key. Okay, but I'm saying if they if they right, you're saying that essentially they, they could try to crack it. They could crack it if they have a if if this is supposed to be able to work offline. That depends on how big your MM channels are, I guess. Like like, <laughs> you, you know you know the root is not constant. The root changes. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if I if I um, have got the prior sequence. But if you have the seed, you can access everything. No. But if you have the prior root, then of course you can. Everything that had happened before in that MAM stream should be something I should be able to get into if I have it offline. So, so there's not necessarily, uh, there, there's no direct link between roots. No. OK. Like, like the roots are essentially mm -hmm. just, you know, the root of a Merkle tree that you generate on a sequence of yeah, addresses. Yeah, but say, to okay, so. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I have different roots each day, right? Maybe. Okay, so I have an offline copy of all the same data. I have all the same root keys from you know, those days, and I can probably but, browse back. But you don't reuse roots. No. Okay, but what I'm saying is if it's offline, you're not reusing the root at all? Maybe well, we should move this question yeah, to, uh, to offline. Yeah, we'll if you do it, yeah. but yeah, that's fine. Okay. So. Yeah, sure. Sorry. <laughs> Good one. Anybody in here able to fetch this uh, two messages on the stream? Fetch works. Okay. So now you can um, send the information yourself if you do step one, but you have to put in your own seed. So you don't give away that seed, but if you run it, you will see your first. This is your first route, and if you give the first route to your neighbor, for example, if he puts that route into the fetch async, he can fetch your messages in that stream. So if you add more, you can add. You can fetch all these uh, these different messages, um, and maybe this is something you can also do at home, offline. So if you have more time, um, but we will share the slides, of course, because this this enables you in a very easy and quick way to experience how MEM works. And to experience also how easy IOTA is with, use, with, with, with uh, JavaScript. So that's, uh, that's what I like the most. I tried uh, Ethereum a few times, uh, Solidity, but um, yeah, it wasn't pretty, pretty hard for me to do so. But this JavaScript actually is quite easy. And if you see the example code, you can edit some things and uh, do it yourself. So you can actually see that it works, how it works, what is being done. And if you want to view the, the Raspberry Pi with the sensor, you can come here and look, uh, look at it more closely. And maybe hold it so... Uh, 
I can see my body temperature right now. 